Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In this video, we're going to try and help you answer the question, which RSP is right for me? So to do that, we're going to go through each of the family members in turn and describe their particular features. And then hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good idea about which RSP is best suited to your needs. But first, I'd like to say a few words about our design philosophy at SDR Play. With each new member of the RSP family that is introduced, we try to include performance enhancements wherever possible. We saw that when the RSP1A was introduced, replacing the original RSP1, we added much better pre-select filters. More recently, since COVID, the global supply chain support issues have prompted us to redesign some of our products to ensure there's no hiccup in getting them out to you. And this has given us an opportunity to offer uh, performance enhancements at the same time as assuring a continued supply. One thing that I think is very important to remember about the RSP family is they have more in common than their differences. So although individual family members may have a, a special feature that makes it more suited to one application than another, all of the family members have a great deal in common. They will all tune continuously from one kilohertz up to two gigahertz. They will all give you an instantaneous bandwidth of up to 10 megahertz. They cover all the amateur radio bands from VLF up to 23 centimeters. They all have a high performance front end filtering built in and they all allow you to visualize all the signals in multiple bands simultaneously. Okay, let's start with the RSP-1B, introduced early in 2024. Now the RSP-1B was built as a way of ensuring continued supply of components which were becoming hard to source for the RSP-1A. Now as I described previously, our engineers also took the opportunity to make some performance enhancements to the device. Now one thing that's readily noticeable compared uh, between the 1B and the 1A is that the 1A was available in a plastic case and the 1B is in a metal case. Now contrary to popular belief, that was not done for better shielding. The RSP-1A has very effective shielding by having a spray-on conductive coating inside the plastic case. In fact, it was done mainly out of customer preference. Everybody seems to prefer the metal box and it is very rugged and, and it's got a good heft to it. So these are the key features of the RSP-1B. As I mentioned, it's an upgrade to the RSP-1A. It has some parametric improvements in noise performance below 1 MHz. For more detail, please see a video prepared by my colleague John. It comes in the rugged steel case. And like all the RSPs, it has coverage from 1 kHz to 2 GHz, with up to 10 MHz of instantaneous bandwidth. It has built-in broadcast band filters for medium wave, FM broadcast band, and DAB. And it has a bias T output for powering an external preamp. As of now, which is uh, May 2024, there are still quite a few RSP1As available in the supply chain. So if you want the absolute lowest cost entry into the RSP family, you might want to check that out. It's an excellent receiver in its own right. Now let's take a quick look at the RSP1B in operation. For these demonstrations, I'm using SDR Connect, although all the RSPs are also supported by SDR Uno. We're starting off by looking at the popular 20 meter band, and uh, I can frame it so it fills the entire screen. Now for this band, we probably are operating at a sample rate of about one mega samples per second. But if we go to the device settings menu, you see that the sample rate is adjustable all the way up to 10 megahertz. So potentially you can display up to 10 megahertz of bandwidth at one time. If we now click on the 2200 meter button, 
you will see that the coverage of the receiver goes all the way down to 136 kilohertz. In fact, you can manually tune it all the way down to 1 kilohertz if you so wish. Moving to the opposite end of the spectrum, if we go to the high hand bands, we can tune in to 23 centimeter band. That takes us to 1.27 gigahertz. And again, you can manually expand the range all the way up to 2 gigahertz. Similarly, if we select the broadcast bands, we see that the coverage extends all the way from the long wave band, or all the way up to the VHF FM broadcast band and of course way beyond that through UHF and up to the 2 GHz limit. Next, let's take a look at the RSPDX. Now in May of 2024, the RSPDX was upgraded to become the RSPDX R2, receiving the same noise performance upgrades that were previously described for the RSP-1B. So let's take a look at the, uh, the DX itself. It, it looks uh, identical regardless of whether it's the DX or the R2, apart from the marking on the, on the box. But compared to the RSP-1B, you will immediately notice there are three inputs available on the side. Two SMA inputs and a BNC the SMA inputs work over the full range of input frequencies. The BNC input works up to 200 megahertz. In addition, on the other side next to the USB connector, there is a, an MCX connector that allows you to apply an external clock. Now the RSPDX is still a single tuner device, but the three antenna inputs effectively gives you the function of an antenna switcher allowing you to hook up multiple antennas simultaneously to the device. So here are the key features of the RSPDXR2. It features the improved noise performance I spoke of earlier. It has the three software selectable inputs. It also has an additional low pass filter for LF and VLF use which works in conjunction with high dynamic range mode which gives you enhanced performance under 2 MHz. It features notch filters on all inputs and of course it comes in the rugged steel case. Let's take a look at it in action. Looks very similar, the same control, same frequency range as the RSP-1B and uh, the only time we notice some immediate difference in the software is if we go to the device settings we now have a choice of antenna A, B or C. That's the first major difference between the DXR2 and the 1B. In addition, if we go down to um, the broadcast bands, for example, uh, let's look at the medium wave band, we will see that, uh, now let's just turn this down a little bit. We will see that the HDR indicator lights up in the display to show us that we're in high dynamic range mode. And finally, we come to the RSP Duo, considered in many ways to be the top of the line of the products. Again, it features three inputs, much like the uh, RSP DXR2, but this time it has uh, two SMA inputs and one high Z or high impedance input which allows you to connect directly to a dipole and it offers uh, 1k ohms input impedance. Looking at the other side of the box, in addition to the um, USB connector, it has two MCX connectors. These allow you to input a reference and then take that reference signal out and cascade it to other devices. A major difference between the RSP Duo and the other RSPs is that it features two independent tuners. This allows you to compare two antennas in real time, or you can tune two widely different frequencies at once, for example HF and VHF, and then thirdly, and perhaps most significant, it makes it capable of doing diversity tuning when two antennas are connected. 
you have a choice of either monitoring one 10 megahertz slice of the spectrum or two independent 2 megahertz slices which can be positioned anywhere in the coverage range. So let's take a look at the RSP Duo in action. When I first start up SDR Connect with an RSP Duo connected it looks very similar to uh, all the other RSPs and uh, if I look at the sample rates available you can see I can go all the way up to 10 mega samples but one of the things where it's very different is if you look closely you'll see the letter S next to RSP Duo that stands for single tuner mode if I stop the stream and drop the device listing down there's a second entry labeled RSP Duo D for dual tuner and now when I start the stream you will see I've got two spectrum displays and I'm going to mute them because it's kind of annoying and uh, the upper primary spectrum is for tuna 1 and the lower spectrum is for tuna 2 you'll also notice the sample rate now tops out at 2 mega samples per second. Now in the case of uh, either tuner I can now go down and I can change to a different band. So for example I can look at 20 meter band on tuner 2 at the same time as looking at the VHF broadcast band on tuner 1. So these two tuners will fun function totally independently and allow me to monitor two widely different frequencies at the same time. Another time the dual tuner capability can be very useful is if you want to compare the performance between two different antennas. In this case the upper display is just a small telescopic whip connected to my RSP Duo whereas the lower display comes from a small magnetic loop antenna also connected to the RSP Duo on Tuner 2. So now in real time I can see a comparison between the two antennas and of course not surprisingly the mag loop is significantly outperforming the telescopic whip. Another really powerful feature of the RSP Duo is the ability to perform diversity tuning. To do this you would connect two antennas to the device and then adjust the relative phase and amplitude between them for best reception. To do this requires the two tuners to be perfectly synchronized. You cannot do this by using two separate RSPs. Only the Duo can do this. So to engage diversity mode, we go to device settings and there's a little uh, slider there that we can turn on diversity. And I'm going to go back and band frame the 20 meter band and then down in the lower right you'll see a tab labeled diversity and here we have a circle that lets us adjust the relative phase and amplitude between the two antennas. My setup here is nothing like good enough to do this feature justice and the results you can get can be quite remarkable if you have the correct types of antenna and antenna spacing. So I encourage you to go to sdrplay.com and look at some of the videos that have been prepared showing what a dramatic improvement in reception you can get because of diversity tuning. Well, that was probably quite a lot of information to absorb. So perhaps this summary table will help you sort out which particular RSP is best suited for your needs. Now is perhaps a good time to uh, remind you that if you look in the description below this video, there is a link to a document that shows all the material that I've shown you here today. So there's no need to try and scribble down notes as you go along. In summary, the RSP1A and RSP1B are very good general purpose receivers. Each features a single tuner and a single antenna input. The RSPDX R2, on the other hand, has a built-in antenna switcher allowing you to connect up to three antennas at the same time and select between them in software. It also has the HDR mode which is very good for reception below 2 MHz so if you're DXing in that range that may be a good choice for you. While it has three inputs available 
the RSPDXR2 is still a single tuner device. For dual tuner capability, the RSP Duo is the only game in town. It will allow you to make comparisons between two different antennas in real time or to tune two widely spaced frequencies. It is also the only RSP that's capable of doing diversity tuning. You really can't go wrong with any member of the RSP family. Which particular one suits you best very much depends on exactly how you intend to use it. I hope this information was beneficial to you and I encourage you to visit our website for more information on each family member and what its particular capabilities are. Thank you very much for watching. 73.